Hello all, CB Baseball Card Collectors coming at you. We have a TTM, our second one. This is from the Atlanta Braves, Craig Sokol, pitcher in the late 70s for the Braves. Let's see what we got. Let's get it started. I'm going to pull out one I sent for last week, and he had actually a pretty quick turnaround. So let's get to it. Oh, there's one right there. Nice. There he is. I'm not certain what stadium. That could be the old launching pad. This is a 1979 Tops. So let's put it right there next to the Visalia sign. So let's do a tight shot right there. So let me give you a little background on Mr. Sokol. He graduated from uh, Fort Lauderdale High School in 1965. He pitched for the varsity team there and earned himself a partial scholarship to Broward Junior College. His pitching at Broward got him a full scholarship to Fro Florida State. Though he was drafted twice in the first half of 67, he declined both times. He got drafted by the Red Sox in the third round in January of the 67 draft. There wasn't much money on the offer, and so he elected to stay in school. Then he was drafted by the Twins, selected him in the secondary draft in June, so a couple months apart. And uh, they selected him in the secondary, and he was taken in the 10th round, but he again declined on the advice of his parents who wanted him to finish his college education. Sokol helped, uh, pitching helped Florida State finish second in the NC 1968 NCAA District 3 tournament. During the season, he threw a one-hit shutout against Penn State. Sokol graduated from Florida State with a B.S. in education, similar to myself. I'm a teacher as well. In February 1970, he finished his classes in June of 69, but he had student teaching that he had to complete in order to receive his degree. So it took him a few months down the line to complete his student teaching. He returned home, played semi-pro baseball for the Crawl, Crawls AC in Schenectady, he threw seven inning no hitters, striking out 19 batters, and was named the MVP in the Schenectady Twilight League. Um, and then on, this is an interesting thing, on weekends, he drove to Pittsfield, where my good friend, I think, uh, Mr. McNeil lives, and he threw batting practice to the Boston Minor League team there. That's interesting. In late August of 69, he signed his first pro contract with the Red Sox. In 1970, he said, as soon as I was done with student teaching, I left for spring training. Sokol then put in three years as a starting pitcher in the minor leagues. In 1970, with Greenville in the South Carolina League, Red Sox uh, affiliate, single A Western Carolina League. He was 14-4 and four for Greenville with a 2.53 GP. Uh, Earn one average, sorry. And 134 strikeouts, not bad. He only walked 43. In December of 70, uh, he married. And then in 71, he played for the Pawtucket Red Sox in the AA Eastern League. In 25 starts, he was 99, 2.61 earn run average, eight complete games, made the All-Star team. In 72, he was with the AAA International League Louisville Colonels in 15 and 7. Um... He was named to the league's all-star left-hander despite having left the team for three weeks in August for uh, Army National Guard service. That was during the Vietnam War. After the 72 season, um, they um, the Red Sox released Gary Peters, Ray Cope, added Soko, Mario Guerrero, and Rick Burleson to the Major League roster. <clears throat> Sokol might have been called up at one point during the 72 campaign, but the Red Sox wanted a reliever and summons Don Neuhauser. For the 73, he just, they decided to groom him as a relief pitcher. Sports writer Fred Siapa said the rap on the rookie had been that he couldn't throw hard enough to get him out in the big leagues. On the eve of the season opener with the Red Sox, uh, having failed to trade Bill Lee, the spaceman, and Sonny Siebert, they opted Soko to Pawtucket. He was 2-0 in the early going, and they brought him back up to Boston on April 27th after Rogelio Moret was put on the DL, disable list. On May 4th, he made his major league debut. Let's see if we got another hit here. And yes, we do. Let's check that out right there. 
Okay. So, after making his debut, he came in the relief of Marty Patton in the bottom of the fourth against Minnesota. He, Patton had allowed three hits, left the bases loaded, nobody was out. Sokol came in, retired the first batter on a sack fly, then another on a fly ball, and a single drove in in the second inherited runner before the third out. He pitched that out of a jam. He pitched another two, one third, and was charged with four runs. On June 3rd, his next outing, he pitched two plus innings with against Oakland and another four runs. So his earn run average went from 10.8 to 10.5. His best outing that year was July 29th, where he retired seven Cleveland Indians, striking out five out of seven, thus dropping his earn run average. Then um, his earn run average increased on a game in August 12th, and he was Option once again to Paw Tucket. A, <clears throat> but he wasn't brought back to the big leagues either in 74 or 75. In 74, he had elbow problems, tenderness, and he knew he hadn't much of a chance to make the Red Sox, he said, after the Red Sox added Rick Weiss, Reggie Cleveland, Diego Segui, and instead of giving him, instead of giving any of their young pitchers a chance, they brought up Mar. <clears throat> they brought up a future Hall of Famer, Juan Marichal. He spent the full year working for Paul Tuckett again, 7-6. and six. He pitched in the Winter Leagues in Venezuela. He was frustrated and asked them to trade him where he'd have a better shot somewhere else. In 75, his contract was sold to the Evansville Triplets. It was sold to Evansville, not uh, another organization. And on one particular game on May 7th, he Threw a three-hit, uh, three-zero shutout, and everybody in the crowd, all 931 fans, got a free McDonald's burger and fries. What he did, he requested, he said, I requested an assignment out of the Red Sox organization. He had his car twice stolen while in Pawtucket. But he says, the real reason is I felt I might get stale going there, going nowhere there. So for Evansville, he was 7-3. and three. Personal problems prompted his return to Easley, South Carolina on June 26th. And on June 26th, he, he returned home. And then on July 2nd, or possibly the 3rd, he announced his retirement. Uh, he wasn't retired because in December of that same year, in 75, he was a player to be named later in the November trade with the Texas Rangers. He was one of three Red Sox players sent to Texas for Ferguson Jenkins. With the Rangers, Sokol returned to the majors. He was the last player to be cut by the Rangers in spring training. He spent most of the year again in AAA, pitching in the PCL for Sacramento. When Steve Barr went down on the DL, Sokol pitched for the Rangers from August 12th of the, to the end of the 76th season, only accumulating five innings over nine appearances. On December 15th, he was released by the Rangers. Sokol decided to sit out the 77. That year, he taught school and coached football. On February 7th, 1978, Sokol signed as a free agent with the Atlanta Braves. And that brings us to our next card. And this one, awesome. He dedicated it to my son, Sebastian. So we have three signatures, one dedicated to my son. Awesome. So in 78, he signed as a free agent with the Atlanta Braves. The last man cut in spring training, he began working for the Richmond Braves. Spent most of the year in Atlanta, where he relieved in 43 games with a record 3-2 and and 4.3 earn run average for the sixth-place Braves. After the season, he went to Venezuela again, had a good winter. In 79, he spent the first four months of the season with Atlanta. I think there's a 1980 card of him. He was optioned to Richmond on July 31st to close out the year there. He was upset by this. He figured he was the top lefty for Bobby Cox during most of 78 and 79 and was angered by his demotion to Richmond. Uh, he went to work in 1980, put in quite a good year, 6-3 and three for Richmond, and earned an average of 2.9 after the season. He told the reporter he was going to return to Easley to live like a normal human being. Where did I send this? I sent this to Georgia Lawrenceville. And then again, he played in the Venezuelan League in March 1981. However, he was released by the Braves 
quoting. They didn't have plans for me. I had a family. I had a teaching degree. So I went to go get a job teaching, uh, a job teaching school for a while. I taught several subjects. I taught health, science, and driver's ed, and I coached football and tennis. All right. Well, there's the bio on him. And I, I personally believe he didn't. They were, he wasn't given much of a chance, but there's the fourth card. I hope you enjoy this. Hope you enjoyed my biographical background. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.